Hello Santa Fe, I'm Carlene and welcome, welcome to Living Santa Fe. Today's guest is a red-headed Italian. <laughs> I always have, to, I always say, you don't look Italian, but then people <laughs> tell me the same thing. There you go, we're the same <laughs> tribe. <laughs> Mark Romanelli. Mark, it's good Present. having you on this show today. Hey, thanks for having me. I, uh, I've got to tell you, Mark just finished a book. It's your first book. Yeah. First one you've ever written. Yeah. Called The Imagination Warriors. I went back to being 10 years old in this book. Mm. It's supposed to be for kids. Indeed. And? And, and up to from 9 to 99 is what I'd like to say. Well, it is. Yeah. It is. It's a very fun book to read. Um, it's about a... I, well, I looked at your cover, and of course I always try to analyze everything. <laughs> I recognize the Scottish Rite Temple. Indeed. And I recognize the, the chairs around it. And of course, mm. I immediately thought, well, those are the Twelve Apostles. Mm. And then I see this rather spiritual-looking uh, princess looking down mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. And... Um, She's got nine feathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Native American. Yes. And uh, the whole thing takes place in, of all places, Lamy, New Mexico, a place that I've been to many times, mm. to the original Pink Garter and also to the Legal Tender. Right. Right. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the book. <clears throat> <clears throat> when did you start writing this? I started this book when my daughter, who's the, one of the stars of the book, in fact, she's right there, falling into the painting. Uh, I started the book when she was nine years old, and she's 12 now. So this has been a three-year process and odyssey of discovering uh, the writer in me and discovering a revelatory process that I went through in the writing of the book. So three years. Three years. Um, it's about a psychic cat called Daisy, and um, there really was a. a there, I, really I was. don't know how psychic her abilities were, but we had a cat called Daisy May, and um, as ironic as it sounds, I was horrifically allergic to Daisy. But Daisy, I have pictures of Daisy still. She lived to be about twenty or twenty-two mm -hmm. years old. She had one of those thousand-mile stares as though she could just hypnotize you with her look. Uh, very calm, very centered, very self-possessed cat. Mm -hmm. And uh, something began to just kind of percolate, I guess, about how I could bridge this visual experience of this cat with the written word. Okay. And your daughter, Philomena, yeah. is portrayed as as the young woman in and it. and she um, I took a lot <clears throat> from the real child here um, my daughter and my son but my daughter came along first she is quite a muse for me she's been my muse because um, I've been a professional photographer my whole adult life and since she came along I've probably shot uh, untold uh, you know, trillions of images of her that are spinning around on hard drives. Um, she is feisty. She is, she's a tough, sensitive, amazing creature. And one of the images I, again, I file away these images in my head. There's an image I photographed of her walking the tracks when she was favoring these long sort of Western dresses for half a minute. She was wearing these long Western dresses. And she's just headlong bounding down the track and w with with her dog and i was able to just freeze that moment in time and i want to say she was five or six at the time so this predates the beginning of the book but there was something about this propulsive energy that was moving towards her future walking down the track. In this case, she was walking to Los Angeles because when you're in Lamy, you're looking west right. to Los Angeles and sort of east to Chicago, and that's how Amtrak runs. 
But there was something about that image that just just fired my imagination. So I, 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 I uh, these were these were my inspirations. So she's very much a character in the book, and there's a certain impatience about her yes. that I really enjoyed writing because she can be that way. Like enough already, let's move on. <laughs> and that's also very Italian and very Irish. I think. Oh, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> Right, right. Well, the whole char- all the characters in it are, are really great. I don't want to tell the whole story here, uh, but I would like people to read it because it is kind of a fun book to read. But uh, uh, it, it all starts in New York City, this yeah. psyche cat getting on the train and going to Lamy to help Philomena out with a mysterious. She gets a letter. Yeah. She gets a letter from... Um, her grandmother's, um, I'm sorry, from her, uh, she gets a letter from Philomena, who writes specifically to her saying that she had had these serial dreams and she was attempting to solve a mystery and that she felt she was half of a puzzle and that Daisy was the other half and only when they came together could they complete the puzzle as, as teammates working together. Um, And she's conflicted about this letter because she's a pretty um, uh, cushy, she's got a pretty cushy existence in New York. Uh, She has a rare bay window on the east side. I've never lived, I'm a New Yorker, but I've been out here for 30 years. I never lived on the east side. But I I assume that she's living up, I think, on the 22nd floor and she's got a bay window, which is unusual for Mm -hmm. New York. And she's just surveying the whole town and, you know, the whole city as her oyster. But then she gets this letter that just kind of shakes up her world. And she realizes deep down that there's something missing in her life. And not to jump ahead too much, but there's a quality of that with every character. It's as though there's a missing piece that needs to get healed or filled in. Right, right. And aren't we all that way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm still looking for that empty spot. Well, but that's the, and that's the journey. And uh-huh. that's the journey. And I think in the book, you want to be entertaining and informative. So you you want them to find that missing piece. But all the characters uh, are, are somewhat conflicted in, in that they're not fully where they want to be. Well, the, I, when I was reading it, I... I just got back from New York. I okay. don't know how people live there, but that's yeah. their, that yeah. if they like it, I like it too. Right. But I don't like it. Yeah. But I thought of a cat looking down at that concrete jungle out there, mm, yeah. and this cat is psychic, and it's trying to guess, well, which way is this fellow going to go? Which way is the fellow with the top hat going? Yep. Uh, interesting, because yeah. we think that way. When we're in the, that type of an environment, the whole time I was in New York, I would watch. Why is this person living here? Or yeah. do they really like it? Do they know any better? But that's the interviewer uh, yeah, in you. That is. Yeah. And, and, you know, it all fascinated me. But the part I liked most was the trip into Lamy. This cat's looking out the window yeah. and sees everything that's going on, sees the clouds, sees the blue sky. Uh, it's a whole different world for this cat going into Lamy, New Mexico. Yeah. yeah. And and when they went into Michael's. Yes, Michael's Diner. Michael's Diner, and they had the cheeseburger. Yes, the green chili. The cheese- green chili cheeseburger. Yeah. That was that was a great touch. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Um, yeah. A couple of days ago, we um, we were able to do the formal launch of the book at Collected Works, and uh, we actually had a good turnout, even though the weather was pretty abysmal. And I was drawing the connection between being a professional photographer who makes a living at seeing visually, you're you're visually wired, to the jump of using the written word to describe. And if there's one thing I might give myself an A plus for in the book, it was the ability to describe things, even things like, and I don't want to give too much away, but I have a, I have a spectral bridge that's in infinite space we call the continuum. And 
how do you write three characters um, walking a spectral bridge that is basically the thinnest of filaments and feeling so exposed in the universe without support? That fascinated me. Mm -hmm. and, and using my descriptive abilities was the biggest joy of writing the book. There were agonies, believe me. Oh, I can see why. I can yeah. see it's very difficult to yeah. to write something like that down to make it interesting for people. And it's also interesting yeah. to bring out emotions in writing. Oh yeah. That's so hard. That's hard for me to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, this has been an amazing process for me. I, I wound up having two fabulous editors, one at the beginning of the process in my early stages of the book, Leah T. Brown, who used to live in New Mexico. She was my first editor, and she was amazing. And um, I'll never forget her saying that you are responsible for every word in this book. It has to be perfect. And uh, you know, photography is kind of the same way. You're responsible for every four corners and everything that's in the frame. You take full responsibility for what the image contains. Um, my second editor was extraordinary and she came along at the right time because she made me so much of a better writer. Mm -hmm. um, she pulled the book together like she was stitching these um, like disparate parts of the book because I really have five. You, you could attest to this. There's just five books in here. There's five books in here. Oh, I can see And that. she said, oh my God, you've got to pull, pull this, pull that, pull that. And she said, I have something that's of utmost importance to tell you. And I've never met her. And all I have is her written words. But basically she said, you are creating worlds. And as fantastical as those worlds are, there are rules of the road. Mm -hmm. And the rule of the road that the children require is that you remain consistent. You can't have this go on in the universe and then that go on in the universe and not explain how that happened. Mm -hmm. There's got to be consistency <clears throat> even in, in a fantastical universe. And boy, that just reined me in. And it made me a better writer. Well, you have to when you're dealing. This book's dealing with uh, psychic phenomena. It's dealing with uh, time travel, which I believe in. I think there is such a thing. So did Why Einstein, not? so I'm not too far exactly. off. Um, and, and actually, the character Temperani, again, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but did not Einstein prove that if you were traveling at the speed of light, you no longer age? That's right. So you've got that going on. You have past lives and karmic, um, karmic lessons, mm -hmm. time travel, a 500-year-old mystery yeah. with a Renaissance artist. And you're, you're, looking jumping, the... you're jumping literally into a painting That's right. yeah. and going back yeah. and back. And back. Yeah, and you know th this is so familiar to me, Carlene, because um, I I've seen through portals all my life. I see through frames. That mm -hmm. that that's my job. I make sense of the world by looking through frames. Um, and you know, I would drive my kids to and from school, and I would always go by the Scottish Rite Center, that wonderfully garish pink building. The bubblegum building. I love it. And actually, I did a tour of it. But I'll, maybe if I have a chance, I can get back to that. But I would always say to myself, it was one more thing I found I wanted to file away. The, the center doorway is really a keyhole. Mm -hmm. It's really a keyhole. It really is. And what is a keyhole? A keyhole is a portal. And I thought, okay, use it. Use that. This darn building comes up for me every day. There's a reason I keep focusing on it. So I incorporated it in the book. And in fact, when I had a chance to do a tour, because my mom, when she was alive, was so fascinated with this building, she said, we must go take a tour. She was visiting me from New York. So we get there, and they take us to the theater, the theater. which is this sort of deep bowl that goes down. So it's very theatrical. And behind the theater, you see these amazing backdrops. And we actually were able to see some of them. And I was impressed with what our guide said. He said, 
the complexity of the theater was such that they built the building around the theater and these amazing heavy hanging backdrops that are on cables. And I was like, file that one away. Because, you know, it, with, with writing, everything is grist for the mill. Yes. And even then, I was just, I was pulling from the world, my little world of Lamy and Santa Fe, and finding my inspirations and trying to pull it into something interesting and cohesive. Mm -hmm. So that is in the book as well. The, that, that theater is, is incredible. One thing that's not in the book is that they were preparing for a seance. When I was there, they had blacked out all the upper windows, and there was a black box on the stage with a chair inside it with an opening out so someone inside could look forward and people situated facing the chair could look in, but the sides and the top were covered. And in an earlier draft of the book, I incorporated the seance, yeah. but then with the help of my second editor, she said, I don't see how this part of the book pushes the story forward. And I had to agree. It didn't really push the story yeah. forward, so I excised it. But again, I'm just using what's coming to what, me. What you saw, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, several years ago, in fact, we were the, one of the first ones that have, has ever done this. We went in and did a television show in. Oh, that's great. That's and great. the Scottish, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And they allowed me to come in there with the cameras. Yeah. I had a wonderful guide. And, um, and it's a mystery. You know, it's always been a mystery. Yeah. I think to everybody in Santa Fe. Yeah. So we did the whole show on the Alhambra, yeah. where it came from, uh, in Spain, and uh, all the Arabic yes. uh, tones in it. Yeah. So it, it has a mysterious quality about it. Very much so. And so the book ties in with this really yeah. well. And, and I've actually been to the Alhambra, seeing that incredible ornate Moorish architecture. Uh -huh. And uh, it, 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 all, it all served the book, because you're right about that building. It is, it is a wonderful mystery mm -hmm. that's right there in plain sight. Yeah. So, of course... Um, I can't give too much away, but our yeah, mysterious character has a connection with the building. I, it's, it's just great. Um, I like the imagination part of it. Uh, it is a very imaginative thing. And like I was telling you a little while ago, I got serious radio by accident on, in my car. Yeah. And I thought, oh, of course, I turned it immediately on Frank Sinatra. And I love Frank Sinatra. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. So I went down, I found basic uh, classics, yep. Yep. and they're the old radio shows. Yep. I went back to 10 years old again. Yep. Yep. I could see the Green Hornet. I could, I could see the... It was amazing how my mind still can go back. It's like riding a bike. It's yeah. like riding a bike. I can it, you go, I right can back, go back, yeah. and I had a face with these people, and I thought, what a gift yeah. the imagination is. Yeah. Um, We're losing it. No, we are. Um, on my website, my uh, self-publishing website, which is, let me see if I remember, it's called littleromanpress.com. Um, I have a number of small blogs, and I write about the process of creativity. I write about the process of writing and what my inspirations were. There is a li little article called, um, I call it Imagination Deficit Disorder. It sounds kind of scary, but in reality, it's as simple as going into your own imagination as opposed to using someone else's. And it occurs to me, we use other people's imagination all the time. It's streaming at us. It's a visual onslaught. It's 18 inches away from our face, and it seems to never leave us. And... Um, it is, it's pretty insidious. It, 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 you know, that, that I'm delivering this message is, is kind of ironic because um, I use these phones, I use a monitor, uh, I, I see and think visually. I'm part of the problem in a sense that as a photographer, my images are out there and in a sense, it's my imagination and not yours or anybody else's. 
But I think for a young mind, it's, um, it's essential to go into our own native resources. Uh, both of my children go to a Montessori school, and that's very much by design. Um, there are days we lose the battle mm -hmm. uh, with, with the digital devices. But for me, this book is a throwback. There is one reference to a landline telephone, and that's it. I loved it. That's what I loved yeah. about it. Yeah, and, and that was all by design. Mm -hmm. uh, there were certain things that I had in the back of my mind. I want a classic tale that has a lot of heart. I want to embed some messages of, of affirmation and positivism about friendship, creativity, intuition, and imagination. Yes. And, and I'd like to think I weaved it in there uh, in, in some subtle ways where you're just caught in the journey these people are on, w which is what the book is about. It's basically someone of, um, you know, an older generation. My, my kids love Bob Hope and, um, especially Jack my daughter, Manny. Bob Hope and, and um, <laughs> Bing Crosby road movies, mm -hmm. The Road to Bali, The Road to Singapore. I mean, can you imagine a 12-year-old enjoying these movies? But basically, this is a cosmic road trip. I, was, I, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember, and I don't know whether kids do this today or not, I don't see any evidence of it. Not like when I was growing up 100 years ago, it seems like. But I remember going to a movie, Errol Flynn. I was in love with Errol Flynn. Yeah. I would go to the the sword fighting movies. I'd come home, I'd have a stick in my hand, I'd be... Ting, ting. Sure. Yeah, Douglas I was, Fairbanks, I swinging. I was whomever and, the movie yeah. was about, yeah. you know? And <clears throat> whether it was a Western or whatever, I had such an imagination. Yeah. I have not lost that. Yeah. Yeah. I still sometime go up to the spa, yeah. you go up there, right. yeah. and I'll go up there and I'll just watch somebody. Yeah. And I think, what are they doing here, and who are they? <laughs> and it just kind of rattles around in my brain. Yeah. And I haven't lost it, and I'm so happy because it's brought a lot of humor into my life. Yeah, yeah, and I think it keeps us young. Uh, it keeps our, our minds young and, and active in very positive, creative ways. Uh, I, I see it as cr crucial. It's just crucial. It is, yeah. and we, we can't lose that. Unfortunately, <clears throat> and I'm not knocking the new ways. I don't like people that knock the new ways. But the internet is good, but it's also destructive. Well, St Steve Jobs uh, himself would not allow his children to watch the very devices that he had created. And, and yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not Luddites. We don't go back. We can't go back. But I, I, there's got to be a place of stillness. And again, that I'm delivering this message is just hysterical because I'm frenetic and, and I've always been that way. You see me at the gym, people think I'm going to die because <laughs> I, you know, sure. I'm that way. But that I'm delivering the message that says, slow down, be present, be inspired. Mm-hmm in the stillness. And I, as I was walking the tracks with my dog, I found the stillness. And amazing things would come to me in the stillness. If I required an answer, I got the answer. Maybe not immediately, but I, I sort of primed my brain mm -hmm. or my heart. But I, I primed myself to receive. And at every step of the book, where I came to sort of a, a cusp point where I've got to figure this out. And I would take this very seriously. On my drives into town, 30-minute drive, I would prime myself to think. I thought so much before I wrote, which is so unlike me. Then my wife will be laughing. She says, you just, you just, you know, it all comes out. But in this process, it was so deliberative, and it slowed me down. And that's why we, we go back to that original thing. 
if we can find the stillness, which we don't really have of have much of anymore. No. I think wondrous gifts come to us. Absolutely. We are bestowed gifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have, have the interesting characters in a, the book. Of course, Ram and the Lama, I love that one too. Yeah. Uh, the psychic uh, Lama. <laughs> you have Beecham, that Hamilton car. That's yes. there. It's there. Yes. It is there. And, and the I've, first I've been time in I it. saw it, I thought, what went on in here? Yeah, there you go. You immediately, yeah. you go back. Yeah. You go back. Yeah. yeah. Reason I remember that when I was about ten, this would not happen today. Yeah. My mom and dad put me on the train. Alone. Alone, to go to California. Yeah. With my aunt and uncle, who yeah. were waiting for me in Pasadena. Yeah. And I got on that train, and well, that was just the biggest deal in the world. Sure. And it had the dome. And you talk about the Tower dome car, yeah. in the, the train the, of stars. The train, train of stars. Yeah. And uh, I remember that. I had a, they had a, an attendant on there that was watching me. They sat me next to a nun. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't get away with much with a nun. <laughs> but you were in good hands. <laughs> so I was in perfect. I, yeah. I mean, there was no fear. I had absolutely no fear whatsoever. I knew what was right. I knew what was wrong. I hopped around all over that train. I had the best old time. What an adventure. Ten, when, ten, and ten, I ten. still remember going into Needles. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was hot. Yeah. And. Uh, oh, so you were Daisy. You I, related to Daisy when I, she arrived in Santa Fe. Or I in was absolutely. I was having a That's wonderful great. time on that train. Yeah. And that dome scene where they look up and they see the stars. Yes. Yes. What a, what a gift. Well, it's, it, you're right. And it's a gift we have in New Mexico. Uh, that I'm sure we we take for granted, but every once in a while I'll remember to just get out of the house, and it doesn't matter if it's the winter, whenever I, I go out and I'll just look up, because it's it's all there, mm -hmm. and and I wanted to convey that sense of <coughs> wonder and awe about something that is always present and yet so profound. Just looking up at stars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it. It widens your whole world away yeah. from Lamy, yeah. this book. Good. Away from Santa Fe. Good. Well, it, it travels far and wide from Lamy, yeah. Lamy even though it's very Lamy and Santa Fe centric. Um, oh, they're going to give us three minutes George has given us here. All right. So I've All got right. just a few minutes to get into this. Um, I'd like to say a little something about the illustrator, Odessa Sawyer. She's from Santa Fe. She is. I, I, I would, too. I'm, I'm, I'll see if I can make this a quick story. I ran through two previous illustrators that really never vibed with the book or had a sense of what I wanted. And a good friend of mine uh, referred me to this wonderful woman, Odessa Sawyer. She's a young mom and an extraordinarily talented illustrator. I said to her on the phone, you don't know me, but I've been referred to you by a good friend. I have a book. It is written. It is going to be published in about, it's, go, it's going to, it, we have a deadline of six weeks and you need to come up with illu 14 illustrations. Can you do it for me? She said, I can do it. And she did it. And she worked hand in glove with me. And the illustrations are extraordinary. And she, for instance, um, I'm not sure which camera, th this is the interior of the Scottish Rite Scottish Center. Temple theater with one of the extraordinary backdrops. Mm -hmm. um, she's immensely talented and what I love also is that she listened and she was so responsive to what I was looking for. This is an image in a cave. It's dark, it's moody, it's mysterious, it's amazing. Yeah. These are little works of art. Rama the Lama. Rama the Lama and, and uh, book two is underway <coughs> and I have told her you are my illustrator. We're, we are connected on this thing. She, she's great. Now, you won an award. Yeah. I, I won, and, and this I've got the sticker on this one. Um, it, it also, it got a good review on Kirkus, which is a big deal. Yeah, you got a lot a of good reviews. Writer. Um, th I won the silver award. Uh, that, so I was a recipient of the silver award from the Mom's Choice Awards Organization. And they honor, they honor excellence in children's books. 
So this was very encouraging. Like, I don't suck. I wrote a book. And <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I highly recommend it. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of women here in Santa Fe, women friends of mine, I know, that have these book clubs. Yeah. I recommend it for adults to read. Oh, great. Jump into another era. Go back along. Go back a few years in your own life mm -hmm. and get the imagination going. Don't lose it. That's because right. it's a wonderful thing to have. That's the message. Yeah. The Imagination Warriors by Mark Romanelli. Thank you, Carlene. Mark, thank you Your for being art. on our thank show. Thank you. And thank you, Santa Fe, for watching.